Studio One Pro 7 has just landed and I've got my top seven features for you. This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Yeah, that intro was kind of a lie. I can't keep it down to seven features, but I'll try my best. Now, I won't be going into too much detail. This is not a tutorial video, but if you want some tutorials for any of these new features, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do those on my Studio One Pro dedicated channel. Links for that in the description. Now with the first feature, I will go into a little bit more detail, but hang in there if it gets a little long because I'll also be demonstrating some other new features kind of alongside it, so don't skip. Let's dive in. Before we launch into our first new feature, I just want to point out the various different event types I've used in my demo project here. For the guitar, for example, I've used audio. I've also used some virtual instruments, and for that I've used the piano view and the drum view as well. And I've also made use of patterns, in this case for a virtual instrument, which is playing my shakers. Now, the reason I'm telling you all of this is because the first new feature can make use of all of these different types of events. It's called the launcher, and we launch it by clicking on this icon up here. And you can see it's open up to the right hand side of my main timeline with a divider in between which we can adjust like so if we wish. Now the launcher as you can see is made up of all of these rectangles called cells. Now they're arranged so that each row of cells relates to a track on my main timeline and each column of cells relates to something called a scene. Now by default we have eight empty scenes which we can see numbered and labeled at the top here. Now in order to understand the purpose of all of this, which I'm sure you're wondering, we need to populate some of these cells. So I'm going to start off by doing it in this way. I'm going to drag an event from my main timeline and just drag it across to this cell here. So there's my guitar event there and I'll also grab a shaker pattern and drag it across to here. Now I'd like to play these, but before I do that, I need to determine where playback is going to come from. At the moment, hitting play will just cause the main timeline to play. But if I flick this switch here, then playback will come from the launcher. And we can even mix and match them. So I could, for example, click this switch here on my bass timeline, and then it's going to play the bass from the main timeline, but the guitar and the shakers from the launcher. I'm going to keep it simple at the moment and keep the playback just to the launcher. And if I want to play that guitar, I can just click on its play button here like so. Or if I want to listen to both the guitar and the shaker together, I can click on the scenes play button up here. Okay, but to fully understand this, we need to populate some other scenes. So I'm just going to grab this guitar here, hold Alt on my keyboard or Option on Mac, and just drag it across to this cell here for scene two. I'll do the same with the shaker, and that's just creating a duplicate. I'm then going to grab, say, a bass guitar from here. I'll just drag it over to there, and some drums over to here. And we've sort of populated scene two there. We'll just have a quick listen to that by clicking on play. Okay, nice. Now, finally, let's do a third scene. But in this case, rather than drag each cell individually, what I'm going to do is grab scene two at the top here, hold Alt or Option on Mac, and just drag that across. And that creates a new scene called scene nine. That creates the basis for this. I'll actually just delete the bass and the drums here, and I'll drag in some variations so it's not all the same. And then let's grab some strings from here and this one, which I've called Deep Flight One for reasons we'll find out about later. Have a quick listen to scene nine. Okay, great. So we've got some scenes to play with. So what's the point of these scenes? Well, you can use them actually in various different ways. One thing you could actually do is grab a scene like so and then just drag it over to your main timeline. That way you could use the launcher as a kind of staging area to try out some different arrangements of things and then commit them to your main timeline. That's just one of the ways you could use the launcher. You can also use the launcher for live 
live playback of things so you could hit on these different cells or different scenes for live playback i haven't got into that much yet so i'm not going to demonstrate that now if you want me to demonstrate that then let me know in the comments down below i'll make a few full tutorial for the launcher um, and another way that you can use the scenes and the way that i will probably use them is with playlists so we can click on this icon over here and that opens up the scene playlist panel we can see our various scenes down here which we could rename so let's rename this one say um, intro um, this one here could be verse and this one could be chorus as you probably guess okay and then we can grab these scenes and drag them up to our playlist like so and we can make a very quick arrangement for our songs okay so i'll just actually grab that chorus and drag it down to here um, and i'll grab this intro and i'll just play that at the end there we could have some things play more than once say this verse here we could change this from one to two so it you know plays it twice before it moves on to the chorus and i think you get the general idea there and then we can play back our playlist like so and i won't play the whole thing that would take too long now you can create multiple playlists so you can try different arrangements of your song you can create short versions longer versions if you want um, whatever wherever your creativity takes you Another way we can make use of this now is to actually export this as a song. So with the playlist switched on, when we go up to our song export mix down option that we normally go to here, you can see here for the export range, it says launcher playlist. So it's gonna use the launcher playlist for export there, okay? When you switch it off and you switch playback back to your main timeline, then when you go up to your export mix down, here you've got your normal options there to export your song from the main timeline okay that's a very broad overview of the launcher i'm sure you have questions and i will do uh, a full tutorial if you want me to but there's a couple of things i think i do need to drill down into right now the first of those being the nature of the playback of these cells. By default, the play mode of cells is set to loop, but we can change that by right clicking and then selecting one shot if we want to. We can also change that parameter globally for all cells as well. Now, if we double click on a cell to open it in the event editor, we can control where that looping occurs. So I could set it, say to loop between bars three and four here, and to actually start playback from bar two if I want to so now if I play that cell you'll see that happen So you can see we get quite a lot of control over the playback and behavior of these cells. Now, up until now, I've been populating these cells by dragging events from my main, from my main timeline. But there's also a number of different ways that you can populate these cells. Now, whether it's an audio or a MIDI type cell, you can actually record directly into it by clicking on the record button in the cell like so. And if I had anything plugged in, it would be recording some audio here right now. Another thing you can do is drag in say some existing loops so to do that I'm going to open up my browser on the right hand side and in fact this is a good opportunity to show that the browser can now be detached like so and I can move it around resize it move it to another screen if I like etc what I like about this now is I can see all of that additional information now with this wider view about the different loops that I might be selecting from here so I can go ahead here grab one of these loops and simply drag it off to a cell like so so another thing you might like to do is make use of the new splice integration. So if I go over to the splice tab here, this opens up my splice account. And then what I'm going to do is go over to my main timeline and just grab all of the events here and just drag them into this search box here in splice. It's going to do a quick mix down of my track and it's going to use AI to search for the most suitable loops on splice um, for my particular song based on characteristics say like the bpm etc now i just want to use drum loops here so i'm just going to filter that to drums and i can try out some of these 
So they might not be absolutely suitable, or they might not be to my liking, but it's going to make it much quicker. Let's try this one. Okay, that's in time, a bit basic, this one. Okay, and once I've found one that I'm happy with, I can just grab that and drag it off to a cell up here. Let's try that again, or drag it to a cell like so, and it's gonna download it to my local hard drive so I don't have to be on Splice all the time for my track super quick and easy integration. As a part of my demo, I used a virtual instrument for my drums, which had multiple outputs. But if I open up my mix view here, you can see there's just one channel for my drums. In fact, this channel is a bus, which was automatically created when I inserted this virtual instrument. I can see the underlying channels for this bus by clicking on this little icon here. That expands all of the tracks which feed into that bus and of course I can go ahead here and mix my drums and process them individually add individual effects etc but if I click that icon again it collapses them and I can keep my mix view nice and simple now you've always had multiple outputs in studio one and you've always been able to create a bus uh, for those multiple outputs but in this case it's now done automatically when you insert the instrument and as I say gives you this handy little feature here where you can quickly expand and collapse those underlying tracks. Very handy in my opinion. <laughs> also in my demo, I use this brand new instrument, Deep Flight One, which is available for perpetual license users and also members of Studio One Pro Plus. It used to be a sound set for presence, but now it appears as a brand new virtual instrument in itself. I used it in my demo using the default preset to begin with. There's a whole bunch of presets to choose from, but the default was sounding like this. I then combined it with another preset, which we can see here, called the birth. This is a much more rhythmic sound, and together they were sounding like this. Now, as you can hear, it's a rather sort of pad-based instrument, and I really like that, especially because I actually create quite a lot of acoustic music, and I find pads just blend really well with that. Now, in terms of controls, it's very, very similar to a previous release we saw called Lead architect okay the controls are pretty much identical essentially we have three main sounds in green yellow and blue and we can blend those together with this central control here we can then adjust the attack and release for each of these sounds and then if we want to dive in in more detail we can click on the sound and it brings up just many many controls for that particular sound a really nice addition in my opinion <laughs> this new feature is the kind of thing Thing that could put YouTube educators like me out of business. Let me explain. For a long time now, it's been a challenge with many doors to get virtual instrument or MIDI performances to be in sync with audio recordings that were recorded without a click track. Case in point here, in green, I've got some drums, which are a virtual instrument, a MIDI performance, and in blue, I've got a guitar recorded without a click track. Now this could be done, but I had to do full tutorials on it, and it was kind of long and arduous process. Not so anymore. You're gonna see how this is fixed in just a few minutes or a few seconds indeed. But first of all, let's have a listen to the problem. Oh, oh, it's drifting. Oh. Okay, perhaps it just wasn't the correct tempo to begin with. I happen to know that I started off at 76.9 beats per minute. So I'll put that in the tempo box down here, yeah. And then I'll just make sure that that guitar is lined up with the beginning of the drums and we'll have a listen again. Not too bad. Oh, it's drifting. Look, by the time we get up to here, have a listen. Oh, and then further on. Yep. 
just basically sounds like a drummer that can't play. Okay, that's happening because there is a variation in the tempo with our guitar track. So what we're going to do is extract the tempo from that guitar track. We'll right click on it here, we'll go down to audio, and then we'll go up to extract to tempo track. We'll let it do its magic, and then you will see here that by magic, at the top here in the tempo track, we can see it starts off at the correct tempo, but it adjusts for the tempo changes in the performance. So at the beginning, it's in time as it was before, kind of. Then if we jump forward, seems to be good there, jump forward again. Magic. Thanks, Brasonis. Stem separation has been available in plugins and online services for a while now, but you no longer need those because it's included natively in Studio One Pro 7. Now, I'm going to be working with this track here. Let's just have a listen to a few seconds of it. Me, you me. So let's imagine I don't have the original stems available and I want to extract them. All I have to do is right click on my wave here, go down to audio, then up to separate stems, click there, and this little box comes up. I can select vocals, drums, bass, other, or all of them, as I have now, and click on OK. Now it's going to take a few moments to process that, so I'll speed up the video. So now that it's done its magic, it's put the stems in a folder here, and it includes the vocals we can see here, the drums, bass, and the other instruments. So let's have a listen to the vocals in solo. Please believe me, though you feel me. And as you can hear, it's picked up the lead and the backing vocals as well. Let's have a listen to the drums. Now, in fairness, the original drums were on purpose lo-fi, and they still sound quite lo-fi. Make of that as you will. Now, is this perfect? Can I hear lots of artifacts and things? Well, yes, I can, but I'd say it's still on par with any other plugin or service that I've seen or heard so far. Now, you could use this creatively. You could use it to get a quick uh, track, instrumental track without any vocals, for example, or like like me, you could use it for kind of educational purposes. I find this really useful for isolating a performance of a song so that I can hear what the drummer or, or the singer is really doing really, really clearly. So for that, it's worth it for me. So what if you want to transpose a whole song which has got both MIDI and audio events in it. In the past, quite difficult, right? Not so now with the new global transpose feature. But before we demonstrate it, let's just have a listen to the current pitch of our song. So if I want to transpose this up, say, two steps, two semitones, I just go down to the transpose feature here. I will type in two, like so, and enter. Now, I sometimes find when you first play this back, you get some slightly odd results. We'll see how we go now. Let's have a listen. And you can hear there that everything has been transposed regardless of whether it was MIDI instruments like these down here or the guitars, which were audio uh, events up here. Now, you may notice a couple of things. First of all, the drums. Well, the drums didn't get transposed because actually, if you transpose virtual drums, you'll actually have them playing different drums. You don't want that. So for each track now, if I go to one of the drums over here, for example, my lo-fi drums, and I open the inspector, you can see up here now, I can select that we will not be following 
following the global transpose, which is plus two. That is unchecked there for the drums. Okay, so that option is available, which is really handy. Another thing you may have noticed is I didn't include any vocals, and that was kind of on purpose. I think this works if you're going up or down a step with vocals, but for me personally, once you go more than two or three steps, for example, they do sound a little bit odd so to speak and i would encourage you to re-record vocals if you're going to transpose a whole song but this definitely will save you an awful lot of work with all of your instruments before we move on to our final few features i just want to remind you if you're releasing your music to places like spotify amazon google play etc don't forget to check out the link in the description down below to our sponsor DistroKid. if you follow that vip link you'll get seven percent off of your first year of membership I'd like to make a couple of honourable mentions for some of the more minor features. First of all, they've changed the way they draw events. And in some cases, I really appreciate the improvement. For example, when we've got stereo waveforms, when they're large, they look like stereo waveforms, but when they're condensed to a small size, they reduce them to a mono look, which I think is much more useful. Also, I like the way they've kind of drawn this border around some of the events. So that especially when they're overlapping, I can clearly see where they're overlapping. And there's a few more improvements, which you may or may not like let me know in the comments down below now there's also been a whole slew of improvements to midi editing if you'd like to see some tutorials on that let me know in the comments down below and i'll make some dedicated content on my studio one pro channel if you regularly use impact you're going to love this new feature you can see i've got it open here in studio one and whilst i'm on a pretty large screen like i am at the moment it sits on there pretty nicely but if you're on a smaller screen like a laptop for example this can take up an awful lot of space well that's no longer a problem now whether you're using say like the piano or drum view like this one here or you're using the pattern editor you have a new icon available to you you can see it here and if we click on this we get this small version of impact appear in our editor here but the really nice thing about this version is it's very resizable and it reconfigures itself so if i were to stretch it out like so it's fine but if i squish it up like so you'll see that it still fits into a really small space and if i make this even smaller like so you'll see it starts to get rid of some of the parts of the interface that perhaps are not all that necessary. So a really nice improvement for impact there. So tell me, what are your favorite features for this release? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my Studio One Revealed channel to make sure you see those tutorials for these new features. I'm Mike, I hope you're well, and I'll see you in the next video.